Yo, what's going on, guys? My name is The Geek Slays, and today we are here with our official review of Gotham Knights, one of my favorite games of 2022. It's... I'm going to get this out of the way really early it's a good game it really is um but let's let's jump into more of the why gotham knights starts off with a very long intro where basically the whole point is that batman dies he fights ray al ghoul for what feels like probably 30 minutes and he's eventually crushed by debris of the crumbling Batcave. The game's heroes, Red Hood, Nightwing, Batgirl, and Robin, find his body in the rubble, clutching his mask in one hand. Batman's death is the setup for what this game is. It wants to distance itself from the Arkham series very, very early on by not having Batman be part of of it so they introduced the four bat protégés as worthy replacements for the batman no matter how dead batman was gotham knights could not escape his legacy as the best video game hero let's let's kind of talk about the differences between this and the arkham series because if you wanted to get into gotham knights thinking it was an arkham game you're not gonna have a great time it is not like an arkham game the combat is very different. It's less like the Arkham games and more like Spider-Man PS4, where it is a really good game, really fun, but the combat mechanics are meh. Like, they're fine. If you loved the Spider-Man ones, you'll love this. If you didn't, you won't. I'm kind of in the middle. It's fine, but it's not great or terrible. It's just fine. So... Many of the villains that were in the Arkham games have made a return, but they're definitely not the exact same. The story is completely different to any of the Arkham games, and it tries so hard to convince you that it's different and that Batman is truly dead, but all of the characters do kind of pull from the same script, but that makes sense. It's the Bat family. They were all trained by Bruce Wayne, this is something we should expect. As you play, you're constantly reminded how great the Arkham-style third-person stealth combat can be. Every punch and kick has weight, has rhythm. It's amazing. This is the rare action game outside of regular beat-em-ups where a group of enemies isn't a chore. It's an opportunity to flex your gadgets and your patience and sneak through a puzzle of patrols. You can do it the stealthy way, or you can go in just guns blazing, and you're allowed to have different play styles, which is fun. As you learn the different visual button presses to associate with them, these fights can elevate from messy scraps to, to actual great, beautiful fight scenes. Now, Arkham Asylum... The Arkham games, Arkham Origins, Asylum, all of the Arkham games do have better fight mechanics. I think the thing that Gotham Knights benefits from is while the actual mechanics are not that great, they still feel good. Every time you strike somebody, you can feel the punch and the weight, and it feels correct. But if you were to go back and play Arkham asylum right now right after playing gotham knights you might like the arkham you probably will like the arkham fighting style more because gotham knights awkwardly tries to break break it apart now while i've seen some people say it's frustratingly inferior and you're allowed to have that opinion i think it's just different and that's part of the problem now, this game transferring or transitioning into more of an open world RPG with skill trees and levels and missions and crafting, it takes all of the resourcefulness of being Batman and the strengths of being Batman, kind of scatters them across the map for you to have to accrue and over hours and hours of play and build up, which is cool. And each character is going to do things very differently than Batman, but you also see the same traces robin's skill tree has the batman where you can string up an enemy from a vantage point but 
also the ability to place elemental-based mines in another tree. Batgirl can't do that move at all. Instead of building up an all-powerful arsenal of tools and attacks, each character was only a fraction of the Batman, which, again, is the point. None of them are Batman. As a whole, they're trying to replace him. That's the whole point of the game. And while some reviews kind of miss that, I think that just speaks more to media literacy issues. The whole point of the game is that it takes all four of these characters to be what Batman was. That's the point. That's the story, and that's great storytelling. The other thing that is very important to mention is this is not an Arkham game. It's not made by the same developers. It's not in the same universe. It's not the same story, and so many people are missing that. Well, this just doesn't really feel like an Arkham game because it's not, and it was never meant to be. It was never marketed as that. It was always marketed as not that. So you created those expectations for yourself. That's fine, but you can't blame the game for the expectations you created for it. Early on, all four characters are effectively Batman light, built in four different sizes because they're interchangeable. They all have the same goal, complete Bruce's last mission. Their conversations are more like punctuation between the open world segments of the game and the setup for your next mission. There are a few scenes that deal with the obvious tension in the group, but the game is most interested in having an excuse for four playable characters. Now, the boss fights in Gotham Knights are very different than the ones in the Arkham games. Here, you're largely opting for battles where your stats and your personal reflexes are more important. Bosses have huge health bars and hard-hitting combos and area-of-effect attacks. They are designed to simply punish your dodge timing and positioning compared to normal enemies. As a solo player, they can be marathons that drain you of resources, forcing you to balance earning momentum and spending it on your own high damage abilities to catch up. The trick? Get good at dodging. The game teaches you how to do it. It gives you visual cues. It is not that hard. Now, there are some boss fights, like the final boss fight, where that doesn't work, uh, it doesn't matter how good you are at dodging, you're just forced to get hit sometimes, and that is a problem I have with this game. The bosses in this game more resemble an MMO boss than they do a boss fight in an action video game. While Gotham Knights doesn't fully commit to archetypes like tank, support, DPS, which is really tough, because the boss fights would make more sense if they did. As a result, Every character you play feels like a diluted version of the Arkham Batman. I know I'm drawing a lot of comparisons to Arkham, but that's what people have been talking about. None of the characters have truly drastic strengths or weaknesses. You can go into every fight as every character, and it will be fine. You're not. There aren't certain characters where, oh, I need to be as be Dick, Dick Grayson to beat this guy. Not really. You just have to play. The crafting system in this game is kind of awful. You don't get to choose what suits you want to craft. It just gives you options. And I beat the game and I still have not had some of the options for suits I want available for me to craft, which is just kind of stupid. Like it gives you challenges, craft a legendary armor and then never gives you the option to craft one. So you can never complete the challenge. It's, it's not the best design of a crafting system, that's for sure. The most clever idea Gotham Knights had was taking the usual open world game bloat and breaking it up more into nightly adventures, initiated after you check in at the Belfry. As you grapple between rooftops, you will hear the police scanner say, hey, there's a break-in right over here, you can go there. Hey, there's a kidnapping. Hey, there's a bomb threat. So as you fight these crimes, you learn about more premeditated stuff, but as you just drive around the city on the bat cycle or are swinging around the city with your grappling hook, you find all of these random crimes that just constantly are happening that you can constantly be fighting. Now, I didn't get to experience the multiplayer for this game yet. None of my friends currently have the game, but... I think that would lead for really cool stuff because the way they've talked about it is 
You can be split up in different parts of the story doing different things. But as you're running around the city, maybe while he's trying to stop, you know, one of those said kidnappings, you are driving through the same area of the city. And suddenly when this group of enemies was just fighting Batgirl, now they're fighting Red Hood as well. That part is really, really, really cool. These small crimes are some of the steepest and most satisfying challenges in Gotham Knights open world. And they felt worth the heap of rewards you were given. Now, these premeditated crimes allow you to apply the Bat Family specialties as the encounter would require. As Batgirl, you can scan the area, disable a turret, you know, or enemy sniper, swoop in for a silent knockout. When you inevitably screw that up, because it seems to always happen, the missions become frantic as you try to manage multiple enemies, throwing firebombs and bullets, and you do get a sense of being Batman, even though you aren't. Gotham City has a lot of crime, and while you could say that's more than any real city would have, I mean, do we know anything about Batman? It's Gotham. There's crime on every corner. What is the statistic they literally tell you in the game? Every week you have a 97% chance of either being involved in or witnessing a major crime. Yeah, there's going to be lots of crime going on every night, especially since Gotham is supposed to be bigger than New York. Now, the one huge issue I have had is performance issues. This game strained my PC of resources constantly. I ran the game just at 1080p, unlimited FPS. I wanted to get the most I could. I have an i9 9900K and a 3070 Ti. And anytime I was on the bat cycle, even when I cranked the settings down to low, the best you were going to get is 20 frames per second. There's a lot of game issues that could be fixed with some updates in the future and let's hope they do because there were constant times where my frames were dipping way below 60 which they never should now interior areas once you got inside away from gotham city and all the lights they the game did run so much better but considering the bulk of the game is you sifting through the city it's a pain to have to manage frame drops without falling off a perch and alerting an entire group of enemies. Now, none of the game the issues made the game unplayable, but they were annoying, which is not something you'd love to see. And it is concerning for players with lesser hardware. It could make the early chunk of the game impossible to play. I think the biggest issue is most things in this game are done better in some other superhero game whether it's the fighting mechanics being better in Arkham or the transportation around the city being better in Spider-Man or the crafting being better in any other superhero game, basically, or any other open world game. The thing that I think really sets Gotham Knights apart is its story. You get the Bat family immediately after Bruce's death, all of the different personalities, at least for now, being told to stick together, work together, and solve Batman's last case together. You get the hothead Red Hood who just wants to go out and punch stuff until something gets solved. You've got Tim Drake and Barbara Gordon, the two nerds trying to do everything and get every bit of information you can have before they make a move. And then you've got the de facto leader of the group, the eldest of the group, Dick Grayson, who is a mixture of both. He's doing everything he can to have his personality be like the Batman. And while that is cool, I think the better parts are all the different points in the story. When Red Hood is trying to storm out and just go punch things in the face and Dick stops him and that they look like they're about to fight. And then the whole group gets into it. When Tim Drake starts questioning whether they should break Batman's code of killing people when it, even when they're not really people and they're Cordoballo's talons, but that's neither here nor there. The whole group has to reel everyone back in. You get 
this really cool story dynamic. And I think there's a fifth character that doesn't get talked about enough. Alfred in this game is absolutely amazing. He is perfect as Alfred. This is what you think of when you think of Alfred. Still a badass, but also just there to help and calm people down and keep people able to see the vision. I genuinely loved this game. Gotham Knights did its best to distance themselves from Batman, but they didn't do it perfectly, which is okay. To me, as a story game, the most important thing is the story, and they did an excellent job. With all of that being said, though, I give the game a 7.8 out of 10. I recommend that if you enjoy Batman or any of the individual characters or just superhero games like this at all, to give it a try. The story is there as more time goes and we get more updates, the performance issues should fix. And then it's all about gameplay. And like I said, if you're looking for exactly Arkham gameplay, you're not going to enjoy this. If you liked Spider-Man's gameplay, it'll be fine. Either way, I think it's a game worth playing. The story is worth seeing. And that's what I got. In the end, Batman is dead. Without further ado, if you've played this game, let me know what you think of it down in the comments below. If you do plan on getting it and haven't yet, or don't plan on getting it, let me know why down in the comment section below. Without further ado, that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.